Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with a severe sense of deja vu. It was just in 2011 when the United States lost its pristine AAA credit rating. Congress had waited until the last minute to raise that debt ceiling, just narrowly avoiding the default, and our nation's finances have paid for it ever since. Here we are again, and some estimates for a default on our debt are as little as 25 days away, June 1st. Uh, and once again, the clowns in Washington are plain chicken with it. In fact, there are only two companies left with credit ratings stronger than the U.S. government. Two stocks that could offer you some protection in these times of uncertainty. I'll reveal those two stocks next, but stick around because after that, we'll do our Monday market update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning, get you ready for the week. Stocks I'm watching, economic news that could guide stocks this week, everything you need to know to get started. I'm going to show you those highest rated stocks next. To go deeper into each of these, use the Seeking Alpha platform. You can go into their financials, upcoming earnings. One of my favorite tools here under the dividends tab, you can actually go to the dividends estimates and see the estimate for dividends you'll be earning over the next three years. Click on the link I'll leave in the description below for an exclusive offer. You're going to get over 50% off premium access. That's just $99 a year. You're going to save $140 off of this. This is a tool I use for research, stock screeners, a lot of great features there. So look for that link below. Try it out. If you like it, you're going to get over 50% discount. That's the lowest price you're going to find online. In fact, it's lower than the price I paid when I started using premium access myself. But I want to get back to our topic because this isn't something that most investors think about, right? That credit rating, but it can be extremely important in a company's costs and competitiveness against peers. So here you see the three major rating agencies, that's S&P, Moody's, and Fitch. They all assess a company's financial health to assign a rating that lenders are going to use to determine their interest rates. For the S&P Standard & Poor's, that rating ranges from AAA, which is pristine credit, prime credit for any company, down all the way down to triple C, which is imminent default. And you can see the ranges here. And each drop in credit rating for a company is going to mean higher interest rates, higher interest expense. They're going to have to pay on that debt. Considering tens of billions in debt owed by some of these corporations and that difference in rate, having a higher rating can mean the difference between success and insolvency. A case in point here, take Apple with its AA plus credit rating, which isn't perfect, but just one step below and pays an average rate of about 3.3% on its bonds. Now, considering it owes $99 billion in bonds, it pays about $3.3 billion in interest expense every year. Now, on the other hand, if Apple was saddled with the same credit rating as Netflix, a BB credit rating, had to pay 4.9%, that average rate Netflix pays, that would be increase in interest expense by $1.6 billion a year. There are just two companies left that with that pristine, that perfect triple A credit rating by the S&P. Uh, these companies, by nature of their financial strength and responsibility, they've earned those lower interest rates. They're going to help them outperform other companies in their industries. We're going to get to those highest rated stocks, but first the honorable mentions. There are six companies with these AA ratings from the S&P, from Standard & Poor's. Here you see in the middle column, that's German insurer Allianz. Berkshire Hathaway, Chevron, ExxonMobil, Swiss drug maker Roche Holdings, and Walmart. Interest rates for these companies can still be extremely low, and, and depending on the mix of their short-term debt versus long-term debt owed by the company. For example, Chevron reported just $516 million in interest expense on $21 billion in debt over the last year. That's a rate of just 2.5% on average. Three more companies here hold credit ratings just one step below that perfect rating, with an AA plus rating on the S&P. That's Alphabet, Apple and Fannie Mae, which, you know, Fannie Mae, while its finances aren't so great, carries kind of an implicit guarantee by the U.S. government. So that's why it's rated so strongly. And the two companies left with that perfect credit score, according to S&P, Johnson & Johnson, ticker J&J, &J, and Microsoft, MSFT. Now, Microsoft has chosen to issue those very long-dated bonds, so it's paying an average rate of 4.2% on $47 billion owed. J&J, &J, for its part, though, paid just $276 million in interest expense last year. That's an average rate at just over 1% on $27 billion it owes on that long-term debt. So that is tremendously cheap financing that helps it stay competitive against any other company. Here I want to turn it over to our Monday market update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning, get you ready to go for the week. Some of the stocks I'm watching, earnings coming in hot and heavy again this weekend next. First up here with our EVGO, ticker EVGO, and Blink Charging, ticker BLNK, both reporting their earnings on Tuesday with analysts expecting falling earnings here, but triple digit increases in revenue for both of these companies from the first quarter of last year. Now, charging stocks have continued lower. None of the brief rallies that we've seen in those EV car makers, Tesla, Rivian, a lot of those car makers seen brief rallies over the last year. It pops up and down, but no, charging stocks have gotten no love. 
you know, those lack of charging stations, though, continue to be really the choke point for the industry. So we could start hearing some positive news from companies as those funds become available from the infrastructure bill signed last year. The price wars in EV stock in EV cars could spur more buy in there, more demand for that charging. I'm holding shares of EVgo here as an industry leadership and really advantage in the fast charging space, but I think Blink is the cheaper buy here at just four times this year's expected sales. Sticking with EV stocks here, Rivian Automotive, ticker RIVN, is also expected to report its earnings on Tuesday. Investors watching how Tesla's price cuts are affecting rivals. Okay, Tesla has cut its prices here in the US and internationally multiple times. Tesla is best set up for a price war because it has the lowest cost of production. A lot of people questioning whether these start up EV makers can match those price cuts without going deep into the red. Analysts do expect Rivian's loss to widen to $1.58 per share before its revenue to have jumped 576% in the quarter to $642 million. A full year earnings here, folks, are expected to narrow last year's loss and for revenue to bounce 147% higher to $4.1 billion. Now, I do own shares of Rivian. I prefer the shares versus a lot of the other startup EV makers. It is going to struggle, though, to compete with Tesla on price. That said, the company is quickly approaching kind of that same point we saw with Tesla a few years ago, where those lower costs in its production should help it boost profitability and that stock price goes higher. Also going to be watching Teva Pharmaceuticals, ticker TEVA. It's expected to report its earnings on Wednesday with this, this stock still trading as if the company was stuck in the problems over the last few years. Okay, if you didn't know, folks, Teva fell into just a debt nightmare with its acquisition strategy over the last five, 10 years, ballooning its debt up to $32 billion, but it's since paid off more than $12 billion of this, it is very much shored up its finances. It then, of course, became embroiled in that opioid litigation, but has settled all those claims earlier this year. The company is expected to report $2.40 in earnings per share this year and trades for a price of just 3.7 times that. That's earnings expected 5% higher next year. Uh, shares recently fell on a denial for its biologist application by the FDA, but the upside remains strong here. Uh, I do own the shares. I own about 15,000 shares here. Target price of at least $12 over the next year. Robinhood Markets, ticker HHOD. A lot of investors can be watching this one. It's expected to report its earnings on Wednesday. That rebound in crypto price is really helping to support the shares this year. The per share loss here for Q1 is expected to have widened to 61 cents a share loss from just a loss of 45 cents a share last year, though revenue is expected 45% higher in the quarter to about 424 million. A full year revenue growth here of 35% to 1.84 billion seems kind of a stretch unless crypto trading really picks up again. Near term rebounds are possible in this, but you know, I continue just to avoid this stock on just basically valuation and lack of any real competitive advantage against other brokers. We're looking at what the stock sectors did last week here on sectorspiders.com, their sector tracker. We can scroll down here and we do see that three of the 11 stock sectors closed higher last week, with technology really doing surprisingly well against the rest of the market. But that was largely due to the fact that Apple, which is 24% of the sector weighting, was up 2.3% on the week. With any of these, you can click through to see which stocks are in that sector. You can see the index weight, so how much weight they have on returns. And we do see that Apple is the second largest stock in the technology sector. It was up 2.3% uh, last week. In fact, without Apple, the technology sector would have closed down a quarter of a percent. So maybe not quite as strong as we're led to believe here with just these overhead numbers. Energy stocks did benefit from Friday's rebound, but still offer some value here at a 7% drop over the last month. And with the oil price right around the bottom of its range, I think there's some selective opportunities here in oil. Communication services has really also started to give back some of its strong rally from the, from the beginning of the year remains relatively overpriced. Of course, all eyes going to be on the consumer price index, that CPI inflation report this week. It reported on Wednesday, month to month of figures expected to jump 0.4% on just an increase in energy costs over the last month. Now that aside, the core figure, so core inflation, which excludes energy costs and food, that is expected to remain right around 5.6% year over year inflation that we saw last month. So pretty much stable inflation. The good news, though, is that lower rent prices should start reflecting in that CPI and could help bring the inflation readings down quickly. Asking rents have been falling several months, but haven't really been reflected in that CPI data because of kind of a lagging effect. So once that starts showing through either this month, if not this month, then definitely starting next month, that inflation should start, start coming down from those rents and could start supporting stocks even more. 
Check out the link below for that exclusive offer from Seeking Alpha Premium Access. Save over 50% or click on the video to the right to see how much you'd have if you invested $100 a month in the QYLD, that covered call strategy ETF, and two stocks I like better. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.